Sea shanties. Sea shanties. Sea shanties. Sea shanties. Sea shanties. Sea shanties. Sea shanty. One day when the tonguing is done. It's the year of the sea shanty. I'm gonna get out of the costume now. I hope you enjoyed the hat. It's the best part. It's no wonder we love to sing these songs. They're easy to learn, they're upbeat, they're fun to sing in groups. In this episode, we'll take a deep dive into shanties. And yes, that pun was intended. We'll explore questions like, how old are these songs? Is it true that all sea shanties come from England? Why did people sing them? And maybe most importantly, how can I learn more about shanties and what all those weird words mean? We'll start with Roll the Old Chariot Along, a shanty that originated in the singing cultures of enslaved African Americans, which is actually where a lot of these songs come from. More on that later. As always, if you like this song, you can learn to sing it by using my companion video linked in the notes below. Joining me on this song will be my friend and fellow shanty enthusiast, Nicole Singer. We'll start by singing the song in a traditional call and response style, the way it was sung on ships. Then later on, Nicole is going to add some drones and harmonies closer to how you might hear the song sung today. And a drop of Nelson's blood wouldn't do us any harm. And a drop of Nelson's blood wouldn't do us any harm. And a drop of Nelson's blood wouldn't do us any harm. And we'll all hang on behind. And we'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old and chariot along. We'll roll the old chariot along. And we'll all hang on behind. And a nice glass of whiskey wouldn't do us any harm. And a nice glass of whiskey wouldn't do us any harm. And a nice glass of whiskey wouldn't do us any harm. And we'll all hang on behind. And we'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old in chariot along. We'll roll the old chariot along. And we'll all hang on behind. If my father will go, he shall wear a starry crown. If my father will go, he shall wear a starry crown. If my father will go, he shall wear a starry crown. And we'll all hang on behind. And we'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old and chariot along. We'll roll the old chariot along. And we'll all hang on behind. And we'll roll. Welcome back. Each of the verses in this song tells us something about the history of sea shanties, and we'll get back to them later. For now, let's set sail. Okay, so be honest. When you think of sea shanties, what image comes to mind? Is it something like this? Nowadays, when we think about shanties, we often conjure up images of pirates, colonial America, or even the Renaissance. Did people sing on ships during these time periods? Of course they did. From everything we know, as long as humans have been on boats, they've been singing songs to help get work done and make the time pass more quickly. But when it comes to the kinds of songs that we call sea shanties today, the songs about whaling and wellermen and rum and old Maui, those songs are actually a lot more modern. Well, relatively speaking. The golden age of the sea shanty wasn't actually until the mid 19th century. In our song, Roll the Old Chariot Along, the first verse that says, a drop of Nelson's blood wouldn't do us any harm, gives us a key historical clue. Nelson's blood is a 19th century slang term for rum. According to legend, when the famous British Admiral Lord Nelson was killed during the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805, his body was preserved in rum. Then later, on the long voyage home, the rum supplies got low, and some of the sailors drank the rum that was preserving Nelson's body. Hence, a drop of Nelson's blood wouldn't do us any harm. The sea shanty as we know it is essentially a product of the Industrial Revolution. In the early 1800s, it was common to transport passengers and goods on cargo vessels called packet ships, and these ships were run by companies called packet lines. In the 18-teens, packet lines began to advertise that they would, for the first time, run on strict schedules, 
often promising to ship twice as fast as before. At the same time, packet lines did everything they could to maximize their profits, which often meant hiring as few sailors as possible to crew their ships. And this led to a lot of shanty singing. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this video. If you are, help out your old shipmate and hit like and subscribe below. The crews on packet ships were under immense pressure to perform a huge variety of physically demanding tasks without much time to spare or room for error. Many of these tasks required the coordinated work of many hands, from raising anchors to hauling ropes to pumping the ship dry of water. And for each of these jobs, sailors had a corresponding set of shanties that matched the rhythm, meter, and tempo needed to accomplish that task most efficiently. These songs usually had a call and response structure, and the calls were often given by a designated shanty man who did his best to keep the men in coordination at a pace that got the job done as quickly as possible without tiring them out. Many ship captains considered having good shanty singers amongst their crew as vital for a successful voyage. Author and sailor Herman Melville, who wrote Moby Dick, wrote in 1849, that some sea captains, before shipping a man, always ask him whether he can sing out a rope, that is, whether his voice can cut through the wind and keep up the song's rhythm while working. Now, to be clear, shanties weren't just sung on packet ships. They were also sung on whaling ships and in the British and American navies. But because of their small crews, packet ships are thought to be where shanties were needed and therefore sung the most. Sea shanties can be divided into two categories, hauling shanties and heaving shanties. Hauling shanties were used for tasks that required coordinated bursts of strength, like hauling heavy ropes to change sail positions. Heaving shanties, on the other hand, were used for long-lasting, continuous tasks, like rotating the capstan to raise the ship's anchor, which could take an hour or more. So what about our song, Roll the Old Chariot Along? What kind of work was it used for? This song could have a variety of uses on a ship, but one of its uses was as a halyard shanty, a song used to set a sail. To accomplish this task, the sailors would need to pull on the halyard, the rope attached to the crossbar that lifted the sail. Roll the old chariot along could be used in a hauling or a heaving style. For example, sailors could stand in place and pull the rope hand over hand while singing in a call and response fashion. Or they could heave the rope, doing what was called a walk away, continuously pulling on the rope as they walked away from the mast. In this walkaway style, the sailors could sing the song and use it as a kind of marching beat. Each beat in the song signaled a footfall as the men walked and pulled on the halyard. And we'll roll the old chariot along. To help keep the men going, the shantyman would make up a new line at the beginning of each verse, and the sailors would repeat that line. You saw Nicole and I doing this in our video earlier, with me acting as the shanty leader and Nicole in the role of a sailor singing back. Nowadays, we've gotten used to hearing fast, rousing versions of sea shanties, but on these ships, they were often sung a lot slower. Think about pulling on the halyard, hand over hand. The shanty man would call out a line and then the sailor would sing it back while pulling twice with all his might, working to lift a thousand pound sail. He'd have to breathe and gather his strength while the shantyman called out a new line and then the pulling would start all over again. That hard work required a slow, measured pace. There's nothing wrong with singing sea shanties faster today, but it's useful to know that this tradition has changed. Another thing that's changed is how long the songs last. Nowadays, they're often pretty standard with a set number of familiar verses. But back in the age of sail, a shanty was rarely sung the same way twice. That's because a shanty only lasted as long or as short as it took to complete the task at hand. A shantyman might start a song with a few familiar verses, but from there, he either needed to make up new verses or borrow verses from other songs until the job was done. And when the job was done, so was the song. In Roll the Old Chariot Along, you heard Nicole and I sing, a nice glass of whiskey wouldn't do us any harm. That kind of line, where the singer is just naming something he's wishing for, is typical of a song like this one. A shanty man might also make up lines about wanting a nice long nap or a rousing time with his sweetheart. That's part of what makes singing shanties so much fun. We can adapt them to our own lives and situations. Years ago, I sang Roll the Old Chariot Along with a group of people during a five-day march for jobs in West Virginia. 
We came up with verses about getting hydrated, remembering friends who couldn't be with us, and finishing the march. Just like on 19th century packet ships, the flexibility of sea shanties is what keeps them alive. So, where did these songs come from? The musical world of a 19th century packet sailor would have been vast. In addition to bringing music on board from their own home regions, sailors would have also picked up new music from the cultures they encountered abroad, from Liverpool to San Francisco to Shanghai. They learned African-American fiddle and banjo tunes, Hawaiian hula songs, Scottish ballads, Iberian fandango music, vaudeville, blackface minstrel songs, and a lot more. These diverse musical traditions not only influenced shanties, but also the kinds of music that sailors played and sang for fun. Back then, these kinds of songs were called forebitters, folk souls, or off-watch songs. Today we call them sea songs. The difference between sea shanties and sea songs is that sea songs were used for entertainment, while shanties were used to keep a crew in time as they heaved and hauled together. Wellerman, of TikTok fame, is actually a sea song, not a shanty. Yes, it's about whaling and sailing, but as far as we know, it was never actually used to get work done on a ship. Sorry, Wellerman. As for the actual shanties, there's a common misconception that they mostly come from the British Isles. Some of them do come from English and Scottish and Irish folk tunes, as well as from other parts of Europe. But more than anywhere else, sea shanties come from African-American song traditions. Roll the Old Chariot Along was collected from formerly enslaved people after the Civil War. And the verse we sang, If my father shall go, he shall wear a starry crown, comes from one of the oldest known versions of this song. It makes sense that many African-American songs could easily be adapted for work on packet ships, because African-American singing traditions include a large number of songs designed to get work done in communal settings. Picking cotton, rowing boats, shucking corn, feeding wood furnaces on steamboats. All these communal tasks had their accompanying songs, many of which were sung in a call and response style that has its roots in West African traditions. Yes, you heard that right. Most sea shanties did not start on the sea. So how did these songs get on ships? We do know that tens of thousands of black sailors, enslaved and free, served on American ships during the 18th and 19th centuries, and they surely brought their songs with them. But more than any place else, sailors probably learned shanties from the black stevedores who loaded and unloaded cargo in port towns like New Orleans and Mobile, Alabama. In addition, by the mid-19th century, some white men were working alongside black stevedores, doing grueling jobs like screwing cotton. Cotton screwing involved using groups of four to five men who handled enormous jack screws to squeeze bales of cotton into the holds of outgoing ships. Black and white stevedores alike worked to songs led by a shantyman. Some of these white stevedores would screw cotton in the winter and then join sailing crews in the summer months, bringing the songs they had learned with them, eventually altering the melodies and lyrics to reflect their own cultural traditions. Oh my gosh, it just started raining so hard. Can you hear that? I guess since today's episode has a nautical theme, we'll just let the rain be a part of it. Okay, why is this history not better known? It has a lot to do with the white folklorists who started documenting shanties in the early 1900s. They were looking for songs that celebrated a romantic idea of ancient English heritage. They listened to retired white sailors singing these songs and just went ahead and assumed that most shanties originated in English or Anglo traditions. Then those assumptions got passed to new generations of scholars and musicians, which is why we have these misconceptions today. It's time to give credit where credit is due. And while we're on the subject of origins, you might be wondering, where does the word shanty come from? The honest answer is, nobody really knows. Some people think that it comes from the French verb chanter, meaning to sing, while others think it's referring to the shanties inhabited by black stevedores in port towns. All in all, there are about as many theories as to the origins of the word shanty as there are sails on a square rigger, which is like, a lot. The golden age of shanties ended in the late 1800s, when steam-powered ships replaced wind-powered vessels. But long after packet ships stopped sailing the seas, other kinds of shanties continued to be sung, like rowing and net-hauling songs in African-American and Caribbean longshore communities. There are people alive today who still practice these shanty traditions. 
For anyone who wants to sing shanties or sea songs, there are lots of options. Right now, you can participate in any number of online shanty sings, and when the pandemic is over, annual shanty festivals will start back up again. Also, if you're up for seafaring, there are programs that will teach people how to sail and sing at sea. In addition, there are dozens of contemporary singing groups who will bellow out these songs for your enjoyment. See the full list of resources in the notes below. May your shanties be long and robust and annoy your neighbors. Hey friends, what piece of history would you like to see me explore through song next? Let me know in the comments below.